Board of County Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial body when it hears requests for rezoning and conditional use permits. Applicants must provide competent, substantial evidence establishing facts or expert witness opinion testimony showing that the request meets the zoning code and comprehensive plan criteria. Opponents must also testify as to facts or provide expert testimony whether they like or dislike a request is not competent evidence. The board must then decide whether the evidence demonstrates consistency and compatibility with the comprehensive plan and the existing rules in the zoning ordinance, property adjacent to the property to be rezoned, and the actual development of the surrounding area. The board cannot consider speculation, non-expert opinion testimony, or poll the audience by asking those in favor or opposed to stand up or raise their hands. If a commissioner has had communications regarding a rezoning or conditional use permit request before the board, the commissioner must disclose the subject of the communication and the identity of the person, group, or entity with whom the communication took place before the board takes action on the request. Likewise, if a commissioner has made a site visit, inspection, or investigation, the commissioner must disclose that fact before the board takes action on the request. Each applicant is allowed a total of 15 minutes to present their request unless time is extended by majority vote of the board. The applicant may reserve any portion of the 15 minutes for rebuttal. Other speakers are allowed five minutes to speak. Speakers may not pass their time to someone else in order to give that person more time to speak. Good evening and welcome to the zoning meeting, April the 6th, Thursday. And do I have Pastor Elder Osborne here? Okay, we're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. I have a quorum. Commissioner Goodson, sir, you lead us in the pledge. Will you please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do not have minutes for approval. Consent agenda, we have two items. May I have a motion to approve the consent? Motion by Commissioner Tobiah. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Feltner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 4-0. Sir, do you have any um, public comment cards you're bringing back? Yes. Okay. I don't think I do. Great. I actually don't have public comment cards, I don't believe. So we're going to close out the public comment session and move into the hearings. Item H1. Thank you, Madam Chair. H1 is Bobby Joe Thomas requested change of zoning classification from GU to RRMH-1. Application number is 23Z00002. Tax account number 3029907, located in District 1. Okay, I have one card, I believe, from the applicant, and I'm, um, ma'am, if, if you'd like to come up, but I, I'm going to ask the commission to approve it because I don't have any issue with this since in my district. Commission? Sorry. Have a motion by Commissioner Tobiah? A second. Second by Commissioner Feltner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed passes 4 0. Thank you. Item H2. Thank you, Madam Chair. Louise Julia Goversick requests a change of zoning classification from GU and ARR to AU. Application number is 23Z0005. Tax account number 4063.79. Located in District 1. Commissioners, I have no card on this, but again, it's in my district and this fits. Can I have a motion? Motion by Commissioner Tobiah. Second. Second by Commissioner Goodson. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 4-0. Item H3. IR Tiki 2 LLC requests a small scale comprehensive plan amendment 22S.18 to change the future land use designation from NC to CC. Application number is 22SS00015. Tax account number 2611662. Two, located in District 4. Thank you. This is Commissioner Feltner's district. Commissioner Feltner, I have one card. It's from the engineer of record. Sir, would you like to hear from yes. him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Steve Monrick. Good evening, 
<clears throat> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Steve Monroe. I'm the uh, president of Monroe Engineering, and I'm the engineer of record for this project. Um, this project is located at 4263 Highway 1 in Melbourne. It's also known as the old Captain Catana's project. Uh, the restaurant's been there for about 45 years now. The new owners purchased the property in 2020, um, and it's now the new home with a Marker 99 restaurant. Um, and since that time, the owners have maintained um, their occupational license even through the COVID time. They've done some improvements since they've been there. The, the first thing they did was take the existing septic system uh, offline and they installed a new lift station in Forest, Maine. Um, this project being abutting the Indian River was, was a win for the river um, and good, good move for the, the Indian River. The second item they're looking at doing is taking the existing uh, dirt parking lot, gravel parking lot, and turn it into a pervious paper paver parking lot which will capture 100 percent of the stormwater runoff so that'll be another win for the river so instead of direct draining to the river right now uh, as it is now it'll it'll be captured in 100 percent during the site plan review it was discovered that the uh, this project needed a future land use change that the restaurant was actually a non-conforming so that's why we're here this evening so be happy to answer any questions anyone might have thank you sir i'm going to hold your time commissioner feltner I don't have any questions, so I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Feltner. Do I have a second? Second by Commissioner Tobiah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Item H4. Chelsea L. Cobb requests a zoning uh, change uh, classification from RR 1 to AU. Application number is 23Z0004. Tax account number 2405118. Located in District 1. Okay, thank you. I have the applicant here, Miss, um, I believe it's Chelsea Cobb. Ma'am, and I've got three other cards. Carrie Alexine, are they with you? No? Yes? No? Okay. And Carl. Carl and Carrie and Sandra. Okay, so Ms. Um, Cobb, if you want to come up first and, and speak, and then um, we'll let other people come up, and then you can. Um... Hi, my name is Chelsea Cobb. Um, we were trying to change our RR1 to AU. Um, in regards to we have a bowl and we would like to keep the livestock in code and we also have a barn off of in our backyard and we're trying to fix our code violation with that as well. Um, we also would like to have a small family garden and as far as I know we need to have that as well. Can I ask you a question? Yes ma'am. The um, small family garden I know it said in here nursery but all you're planning on doing is a garden? We have some <coughs> palm trees that we plan on having. Okay. And as of right now, that the palm trees we have, we're going to be planting corn, things like that. So it's going to be a little bit bigger than a small tub size garden. Is it for your family? Yes, ma'am. Just for your family, but it's not for business? No, ma'am. Just, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, if they just did that nursery part as their family, AUL would work for that, correct? And they could still do what they want it? Yes, ma'am. The, the, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. The AUL would work for um, personal agricultural type uses is when it get into the commercial activity or if they're selling those, you know, the plants to individuals off of that site, then we would have that would be uh, not allowed under the zoning classification. Okay, let me let them come up and you've still got some time left if you want to um, respond to the other people's um, questions at a moment. So don't leave too far. Miss Carrie Alexine. And then Mr. Carl Alexine, you'll be next, sir. And then Sandra, I think that says Jake, I'm not sure. Come on up. Yeah, if y'all be ready. Hi, my name is Kari Exline. I live at 4375 James Road, so it's just two houses in between us. Um, uh, first of all, uh, um, it, they're only on three acres. And your thing said, uh, the, the code said, uh, I mean, the, the zoning s approved an AUL, not an AU. So I just wanted to make sure you've got that correction, that that's, first of all, what they wanted to do. The second thing is the barn in question has been erupted. Uh, it's been built, and um, it's in violation for over a year. 
in talking with um, the code people, the, the, the zoning people, they said, not the zoning, the code people, my, my husband knows the individuals, but anyway, um, they, um, the, um, uh, they're in violation, they've been in a violation, they have been telling them they're in violation, and they have been ignoring them. From what I understand, the county is getting ready to take them to court. The other thing is, what they have underneath that pole barn is an awful lot of industrial equipment. At the zoning meeting, they were asked, the, the individuals were asked, do you have a business there? They said no, that is a lie. I have the information here that says that Lightholder Land Solutions, LLC, that the principal address is 4475 James Road. So they are conducting a business on that three acre land. So that is a lie. This needs to be resolved. So my, in my opinion, you really need to table this. You need county people to go out there and find out what's really going on. Because we've also noticed some tanks and we're not sure what is in those tanks. That there could be some um, um, uh, uh, diesel fuel, um, maybe, I don't know what kind of fuel, but they are huge tanks that are in there. The other thing is they have been tearing down all the trees back there, also in violation of what the county. So again, my, uh, what I prefer that you all do is table this, get some county people out there because they won't let anybody go on their land to find out what's going on. And I tell you, they are really conducting a business out there. And I think it's an illegal business for that area. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Carl Alexine. Say it again. Excellent. Excellent. Wait till there are three syllables. Thank you, sir. If you'd state your name and address. Carl Exline, 4375 James Road, Cocoa, Florida. Um, I'm a couple houses away. The, uh, sounds like she covered everything. My biggest thing was is the AU versus the AUL, right? I wanna make sure that if they're gonna do it, that they do it with non-commercial intent. So that, that's the whole reason, that's my main concern. So if, uh, if they, they wanna grow a garden, I don't think you need a permit for that, no matter how big it is. But if you start selling it to other people or your sell services, then that's commercial, right? A nursery, for example, like you were stating. So um, that's a commercial business. So that's why I, um, I made the recommendation in the meeting, in the, in the zoning board meeting, and they were supposed to give you that recommendation also, I believe, that it was gonna be AUL is what they recommended and I think that's the more appropriate way to go down the path. Okay. Ms. Sandra Ake. Good evening, my name is Sandra Ake and I live at 4525 James Road. These people are my neighbor. I live right next door to them and they, I do have photos, I just don't have them. I have them on my phone. I didn't get a chance to print them out, unfortunately. Between my work and I'm having problems with my horse, I haven't been able to do that. But I, can, I do not want a business living next to me. And that is almost what they're doing. He's had his uh, employees there and oh god I'm just tired I'm sorry um, there's mounds of dirt it's not to add more dirt to bring his land up that's not what that's for there's different types of dirt and you don't need that if you're going to raise your land up the other thing is is that he raises it up, he, they're already 10 inches above my property right now in the front, and he's wanting to do it in the back. Right now, I get flooded tremendously because the person, the people who owned the property before and built the house hauled in, I can't tell you how many dump truck loads of fill dirt. 
And when they got done leveling it all out, and we went over and we measured it, it was 10 inches above us. They left no swell and no ditch to drain. After that, and that's why I believe that my friend sold her property to my husband. And at the time, I wasn't married to him. I am now. <laughs> um, my yard floods badly. And if he raises the back up, back there, I will, f I will flood even worse. I have a horse out there. I got my dogs out there. I have a pond. Now, I also have a ditch run along my property. My pond also has about a four inch PV PVC pipe going from the pond to the storm water drain. From the storm water drain, that goes into the ditch. Never had it flood until those people built up. When they built up, all of a sudden, storms come in, flood. I will flood all the way out to the road. And I'm about an, I'm a, about almost a half an acre in. So my back, from the back, back of my house all the way out to my back pasture, which is about almost two and a half acres, because I have three, floods. Our drive, I would have to put rubber boots on to walk out to the gate. My grandson, when he drives, tries to drive his car out, a lot of times he can't because it floods over the top. So now the pond and the road is all underwater. So I can't take them, I can't take people building up anymore. I can't. And I also don't want the, and the noise from his commercial vehicles, and they are commercial. Dump trucks, front end loaders, forklift, you name it, he's got it over there. And he has also added lights to his pole barn that are very bright. It lights up the whole area. But I would, I would prefer that he stays at our R1 just like we are. But if you allow anything, AUL, because that is what they agreed upon at the first meeting. And that's what I got to say. Ms. I mean, Sandra, if you want to see pictures, I do have on my Are you phone. on the property to the east side or the west side? Mm, I'm on the west side. The west side of them. Are, did you come up a while ago and we re, redid your property? Was that you that we changed from RR1 to AU a little while ago with the, with the horse barn in the back? Oh, no, ma'am. I'm not, I'm not AU. I'm so, RR1. Okay, so you're not at the south of the property. Because a little while ago, no. one of your neighbors came out, and we, we turned it into AU, and we went all the way down to a horse barn on the bottom. You mentioned horses, so I thought that might be you. Uh, no, I only have one horse. <laughs> okay, okay. So the people I to have, the south of you, I they have, have a little horse barn. Behind me, right. right behind my property, there's a horse barn. Okay, I was just wondering if that was you. No, okay. no. I'm right on 524, so like he is. Oops. Thank you so much. I must be done. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Chelsea, did you want to come up and make some comments? Um, as she was saying, yes, she does flood, but um, she actually flooded during the hurricane that poured tons and tons of rain where everybody flooded. And yes, she does have a pond which filled up and flooded her driveway. And like she said, we haven't touched the front of our property, so her flooding is already there before we bought the house. Um, as far as I know that you can park machinery in your yard, it is in the backyard, so it's not even in the front, it's parked under our barn that we built to park our machinery under. Yes, we do have an employee that comes and gets our dump truck. I don't know if that's I, not allowed. I probably don't have a lot of concerns with that. Let me ask you this question, though. Is um, the code enforcement case, do you have that in the process of getting cleared up? As far yes, ma'am. This was to clear it up. No, I talked to the code the, enforcement, and okay. they said to hold off on anything with that until this was finalized. Because I was going to pay off or pay for the permit to clear the barn. I have the engineering and everything. So yes, we. So that's we're part not of the problem it. with this right now, too. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you comfortable with an AUL on here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I, I, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and have someone make a motion to approve that, and you can still what you. Can, 
you do, and then everybody else has a little more comfort. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Commission, can I have a motion? I'll Please. make a motion, uh, Madam Chair, to uh, approve AUL. Thank you, sir. Mr. Goodson, I'm sorry, you put your light on. That's all right, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, this would be a staff question. Our, yeah, are you one lots, which are usually a lake, an acre or larger, do, are there a requirement that they have swells to drain their water to the ditches or to a pond, or are they allowed just to fill four foot higher than their neighbors and flood their neighbors? No, sir. So when we look at a residential permit, we, we do a review of where they're going to, how they're going to grade the lot to get the um, storm water to either the right of way or uh, a storm water system that is able to accept that, that storm water. Okay. Madam Chair, another question, please. If that be true, then, and a resident, fit, you know, gets their home built, grades their swells, and then 10 years later fills up all the property, do we uh, go out to check if they've maintained their swells? It's on the uh, property owner to ensure that they maintain the drainage and provide for that historic drainage flow. And then they just only recourse they have is code, code enforcement, correct? They can look at code enforcement. Um, if we would be able to help them, then we would, but I don't know that we have many of those type of cases. Huh. Another question. If you know anything about Florida and you have any water in a swale and you have a homeowner that has the money to buy dirt, they're going to fill about everything they can. They're going to fill everything they can. Now, my other question, Madam Chair, to staff would be, if you approve this AU and agri agricultural AU uh, zoning, how many homes could or how many dwellings could they put on their land that that read minimum lot width depth 150 minimum living area 750. Just one. They would only be able to fit one home on this unless they had like a um, an accessory structure that would provide for like an, an, an I'm going to say like a um, like a mother-in-law or something like that. I'm sure last one, I promise you. So therefore, it would be really better if it was AU rather than AUL. That would eliminate, that would be more uh, in tune with everything out there that's one acre or larger, correct? Uh, the, the difference between it is really that the AU has a commercial aspect to it and the AUL is more of a, you know, is more for individuals that are going to have farm animals just for their own personal use and not a commercial aspect okay. of it. Thank you, ma'am. But, but I would say, commissioners, there's been conversations this, today about the home business aspect of this. And so um, there's a preemption in Florida statute that preempts us from doing, um, for regulating home occupations. So that would be looked at by the state. It wouldn't be a county function to, to enforce that. Okay, I have a motion on the table for AUL. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Tobiah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Passes three to one. Moving into <coughs> item H5. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair, H5 is Timothy Shane and Deborah Jane Kelly request a change of zoning classification from AU to RU-111. Application number is 22Z00074. Tax account number is 2113314, also located in District 1. Thank you. Mr. Human, I know you're here. I'm, this is super simple. I'm good with it. Commission, can I get a motion to pass this? Thank you, sir. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second by Commissioner Feltner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Item H6. Half Halt Stables LLP requests a change of zoning classification from AU to RU 1 9. Application number 22Z00068. Tax account number is 240 7648. Located in District 2. 
Thank you, Commissioner Goodson. This is your district. I do have one card here from the applicant, sir. Would you like to hear from him first? Yes, please, Madam Chair. Okay, Mr. Um, Tony, oh, Miss Tony Pastor Mac, how are you? Good, ma'am. Hi. Um, I feel like it's pretty simple. Um, we are doing, we've surveyed a piece of the property, about a third of an acre, that has a house on it that is now part of Half Halt Stables, but we have surveyed it out to change the zoning and sell the house. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Goodson? I have no issue with this, Madam Chair. Okay. Did you want to make a motion? I'll make a motion for acceptance, Madam Chair. I'll I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Goodson, second by Commissioner Feltner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 5-0. We're on item H7. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H7, Wendy Cleefish requests a change of zoning classification from RU1-11 to RU2-12. Application number is 22Z00067. Tax account number is 2731680, located in District 5. Thank you. I have the applicant, Ms. Wendy Kletich. I'm sorry, I'm going to have our time. So you want to come that forward? I do have some cards on this, so do you want to come forward first? And this is um, District 5, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have been briefed as well by county staff and, and Ms. Danielle Stone as well. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me here today and for being here. My name is Wendy Cleefish and I own 107 Franklin Avenue. And I'm here today to see if we can go from a RU111 to an RU212. Multifamily, please. Thank you. you look really familiar. Have you done this recently? I've, I have been up here recently, um, and I have been inspired. Um, I am doing this because, as um, a quote from you, um, in America, you can decide to do whatever you want with your property as long as there is approval. Okay. Oh, Commissioner Tobias, you have your light on, sir. <coughs> Thank you. Sure. Thank and I will you. hold your time, ma'am, so later you can come back, too. But go ahead, Mr. Tobias. I'm sorry. I was just letting her know. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, you were here six months ago. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. And you said maybe, these are your words, not mine, uh, maybe we can stay even with the RU11 zone and keep Franklin a very nice and peaceful residential place. So my question is, is uh, do you no longer care about Franklin uh, Avenue being a nice and peaceful place? I care about it, but respectfully, sir, I have another residence in India Atlantic, and I'm very excited for that. Um, knowing that my neighbor to the east of me was approved for the rezone. Oh, so, so you're, you're moving? I already have. Okay, um, so, so let me ask you a follow-up here, because you answered my question. You, thank you, I appreciate you're no longer gonna be there. That same commission you stated, with tears in your eye, by the way, yes, that sir. if your neighbor's request was approved, quote, what I lose the most is my home and quote, I will have no backyard for the rest of my life because it will be du duplexes. So my question is, is, you know, if this is rezoned and it was so painful for you, don't you care about your neighbors? You're moving, but don't you care about your neighbors? Respectfully, I care about myself more than anything. And I care about my disease which is multiple sclerosis. I care about myself respectfully, sir, more than I care about anybody else. And it was, um, uh, it, was Chair, it was very one, shocking one, that what happened before, sure. but it did, it did pass, so. Okay, it's fine. One, I don't know any, I'm not a doctor, I don't know anything about multiple sclerosis, so I apologize, but thanks for bringing it up. My question to you is changing your mind, uh, a, uh, outcome of multiple sclerosis from being adamantly opposed to something and saying, quote, it's going to end a peaceful and residential place to all of a sudden six months later it saying I don't care, I only care about myself. Well, it already has, respectfully, sir, been uh, a parking lot and it's been very, very busy next door and there is and no peace and with the construction, um, 
I just think that in my time, it was time for me to go. I, it is my choice to want to move and not have a wall of people in my backyard. And I had to, after um, several people mentioning my business it. in the meeting, I, I, I had to think it. of Thank it as you. a business. Thank you, ma'am. Quick question, though. Yes, I, I'm going to call another card. And, um, have you already sold the house? No. You're going to own two properties then? Yes. Okay, that's I currently just already do. I just want you to know I already do. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you hadn't already sold it. But okay. No, ma'am. So you're going to be able to come back in a little while if, if there's any more questions. I'm going to call the other cards now. All right? Yes, ma'am. You want me to just tuck over here? Sure. Okay. Okay. Thank I, you so much. You're welcome. You guys have a blessed holiday. I believe this is Selena. Elena. Elena Kulapes. In all fairness, you guys, you guys need to like write real tight here for me. Yes, ma'am. How are you? Thank you. Good. Okay. If you would state your name and address, mm -hmm. that would be wonderful. My name is Elena Knopfler. Um, I'm the owner of 109 Franklin Avenue. Um, I live next door to Mrs. Clifford. Um, please let me start with a quote. So I'm quoting her too today. Um, it was, yeah, in front of you or the commissioners uh, here um, some months ago, and I, yeah, uh, remember where we were. Quote, to go from a one story to an aggressive, I feel aggressive, RU212 resort dwelling unit is a lot. I do realize that real estate is on fire. I am just respectfully asking that maybe we can stay within the RU111 zone because what I lose most is my home. Please keep Franklin a nice, peaceful residential place. One day, it was not even 24 hours later, she filed the application to rezone her single family home to set aggressive RU212 resort dwelling and said during the PNZ meeting recently, quote, everything around us is all commercial. Across the street is commercial. Behind me, everywhere I'm surrounded by commercial. And if I approve, uh, and if approved, I have great plans for you. So, <clears throat> well, the character of the applicant is one thing, but I look at the true character of the neighborhood and I would like to show you what I'm, where, where we live and what's the truth. Okay. Miss Elena, are you the one that we just approved this for six months ago then? No, I'm this not. Okay. Thank I'm you. not. Okay. <laughs> I, I oppose this. Um, Two. So okay. I, um, I oppose the last one and I okay. oppose this okay. one. Okay. Yes. So you can see here easily <laughs> marked in yellow where the business is located to. So you see the A1A. Here's the A1A. And you see in red the subject property, which is not surrounded by commercial. You see Franklin Avenue in blue, which consists as a one-story neighborhood. So everything what I marked up here in blue is all one stories. Um, also, we have in the south the Chalice Atlantic, which is a 55-plus community, which resists also on one-story homes. So it is far away from commercial. The only person who runs a commercial business out of a family, family residence is Mrs. Cleefish herself. She is right by saying that she is surrounded by commercial when she refers to her own limousine business in front of her house and in the backyard. So we are wondering, and you see here the limousines by the way too. <clears throat> so we are wondering if her great plans are continuing to operate the limousine business from a multifamily business. She did not move away. Two homesteads are there. The third thing is, in order to get her rezoning approval, Mrs. Cleefish compared her single family residence to a way bigger vacant land formerly zoned as commercial. 
However, there is not one property that was rezoned and developed. I said rezoned and developed in the last 10 years within a 750 feet, feet radius. Not one. So there is no Me Too rezoning Mrs. Kleefisch can refer to. Fourth, the residential neighborhood consists of one-story homes only. Some of these homes are over 50 years or older. Yes, it's true, multifamily are part of this neighborhood too. But again, over 50 years, the character of the way a neighborhood is one-story homes only, from the east to the west. Ma'am, you only have 20 seconds okay. left. Yes, I'm good, thank you. So you see from west to east or west, uh, east to west, it consists, or consists on all single family one stories. I would fully support Mrs. Kleefer to develop a duplex with one driveway to Franklin and one to Gross Point, but limited to one story. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Sandra Sullivan. Good evening, uh, Sandra Sullivan, South Patrick Shores. So um, what I wanted to bring up is a question, um, and this would be if, if, if you're amenable to the county attorney answering this question. So la last week we had our governor sign SB 102, which is basically to succinctly it relaxes the rules on density and height, offers tax breaks for developers, and most, um, it's about uh, affordable housing. So my question is we're gonna see increasing pressure on single family <laughs> homes next to the commercial area being acquired. So in the instance of this property, for example, what comes to my mind is, is this going to be combined with the commercial properties next to it? And they're going to, are they going to want to put in a, what they call a mixed use uh, business and, and residential and say, hey, there's 10% affordable housing in here. So we get to exempt height and density per SP 102. We can go to the highest building within one mile. So here's my question. The barrier island is a critical evacuation deficiency. We are like the Keys, which is an area of critical concern in the sense that if there's a category four or category five, we're under six to nine plus feet of water according to the NOAA search map. So my question is, Central Beaches was capped by Brevard County in density. Are we grandfathered in from this bill of SB 102, and as it relates to this property, if this is rezoned, then presumably I'm thinking there's a developer that wants to buy it rezoned to even much bigger under SB 102. So it's very prudent to understand, is the barrier island protected or are our lives expendable? because we can't get everybody off the barrier island. It's 60 hours to evacuate the barrier island. A vast moving hurricane like Andrew, or one that changes directions, we could be like Fort Myers, have 15 hours. And people are going to die because like the Keys, we're under nine plus feet of water in a category five. So it's a very important question. I would ask that you humor me on this and see what our attorney, the county attorney, has to say. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. James Paris. Your name and address, sir? Hi, I'm Eric Paris. I own 117 Franklin. And um, I, I think you all saw the information that I provided Jennifer Jones about the, my comments, I assume. But just for the record, I'll read what I put 
since I have five minutes. I'm the owner of 117 Franklin Avenue. I fully support Wendy Keffler's request to change the property located at 107 Franklin Avenue to 2RU2-12, zoning without any use restrictions. I've attached the relevant zoning map and multifamily comparison. 107 Franklin is adjacent to multifamily on all sides, including a 48 unit plus a 28 unit multifamily complex adjacent to the south boundary. While the west boundary property 109 Franklin is zoned RA26, which allows for fee simple ownership of individual attached units, essentially multifamily. In addition, 107 Franklin Avenue property boundaries are within 500 feet of a 97, 50, 30, 7, and 6 unit condominiums. The 97 unit has a height of 10 floors, the 7 unit has a height of 8 floors, and the 30 unit has a height of 6 floors. Of the 22 parcels located on the 100 block of Franklin Avenue, only three would remain RU1-11, and all three are adjacent to multifamily on two or more sides. 115 Franklin Avenue adjacent to multifamily RU-212 and RU-210 plus a 28 unit complex on the south side. 113 Franklin is adjacent to multifamily RU-210 plus a 28 unit complex on the south side. 111 Franklin Avenue is adjacent to multifamily RU-210 and RU-26 plus a 28 unit complex on its south side. In addition, short term rentals are now being done directly across from 107 Franklin at 104 and 106 Franklin. In addition, two more are in process at 119 and 121 Franklin. Therefore, it would not be reasonable to restrict 107 Franklin from this use allowed in RU-210 and RU-212 zoning. During the planning and zoning board, someone got up and made a comment about traffic being increased by the zoning change. In my opinion, this zoning change increases the traffic count by about four vehicles a day, which is about, would be, in my opinion, less than 1% increase in traffic. And um, the person that got up before and used the, this diagram, um, this is actually stuff that I did, and they removed a lot of the different multi-units off the thing to, to modify that all over the place, there's multifamily, like everywhere. It, it, you can see it, I'm sure, in the comments. But anyhow, just for example, here, just down here, there's an eight, eight units of sixplex, and all the, the uh, right across the street directly on Neiman, there's a sevenplex. So the, the, these comments about there being single family everywhere that are 50 years old, see, this is what the issue is, is that any house that's 50 years old, it's hard to get insurance, so you know they're being demoed, and they're already being demoed and re replaced on Neiman. And so it's, it's going to happen, and there, the, there is no difference in the height between RU111 and RU212. That's just what the county zoning is. So I don't agree with the comments of the previous person about the heights. Any questions? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Goodson, you have your light on, sir. I'm sorry. You didn't mean to have it on. All right, Commissioner Feltner. Uh, it's actually for the owner. Okay, Miss Wendy, would you come up again, please? Madam Chair, are you amenable to a binding development plan? Um, I think you had a conversation possibly with staff earlier for the property, I limiting to one story. Right. Um, I have no intentions. Um, I think the confusion, honestly, if I'm being honest, is this went to 100 people in their mailbox, and it has the assumption, and that's we, why people are visiting. I, okay. I don't yeah. think we saw it. You guys didn't see that, right? Well, it shows, like... People are coming up to my house that I've never even met, even over in Melbourne, and asking me why I'm building a resort. Ma'am, it, it won't affect our opinion because we don't know about it. If okay. It well, I thought that might because a lot of people seem to think all of a sudden I'm going like uh, six foot high, and I don't intend on doing anything but 
the multifamily duplex. Right, I, but I, I think the, the zoning wouldn't possibly allow that. So are, are you open to a possible binding development plan that would stipulate that it would, would be um, limit to density to two duplexes, no resort dwelling? Single story. Single story. Would, would you I would was, you be open to that? Um, I will do whatever you say. I was told four units, no more than 35 foot high, was the restriction, um, which I was fine with. That's all I have so far from, um, respectfully, from um, Melissa and Jennifer. So that's what I, I have. Um, and also from the last, I agreed to that respectfully at the last um, <coughs> zoning meeting. Okay, did you talk to the planning and zoning staff today, possibly about a, a binding development plan? I, talk, I talked with a, your, uh, one of your staff, Mr. Baller, very nice gentleman yesterday, yes, sir. Okay. And okay. I told him I would do exactly what you guys say. Uh, I'm maybe, not here to build a resort. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe for clarification, we could, we could let Jeffrey speak to what the BDP would be. Can we, do, can we do that? Okay, but I, I do agree with Commissioner Feltner. I would be comfortable with that. Otherwise, I have some hesitations. But as um, Commissioner Feltner just stated, if you would be willing to do a BDP saying it's going to say single, single story, a duplex, limit the resort, and I think maybe two driveways would have to be had coming out of um, both of the properties. That, that might be another good thing to have. So I think because you're going to be renting this out, which I, it's, it's fine with me. And I, I'm not going to... Um, uh, chastised you for bad behavior last time because I, I think it could be a fit on the property but I think that would be something that would give me more comfort as Commissioner Feltner said for safety purposes uh, we thought it was best to lead the driveway on Franklin where it's at but we will do whatever you want you. if the driveway is on both sides um, it doesn't, whatever you guys say is, is what we're going to do. That's really what it comes down to. With all due respect, whatever you say goes, and that's what we do. Did you still need Jeffrey to respond? I, I, She's I, think, to uh, it, so. I think just to clarify would what the BDP. Would you go ahead and read in what you think the BDP would be for her, sir? Would that help? Have Jeffrey do that? Yes. I, okay. okay. So uh, some of the possible conditions for BDP would be to... Uh, limit the building height to one story, the vertical distance measured from the average elevation of the finished development grade of the building site to the highest bearing point of the roof joist or truss. Number two is limit the density to two duplexes, which would be four units. And number three would be no resort dwellings. And number four, access shall be limited to one duplex having access to Franklin Avenue and one having access to Gross Point Avenue. Just for clarification, I did have a conversation with Ms. Uh, Flea Fish um, yesterday, and we talked. We only talked about limiting the height and the uh, the two duplexes. We did not discuss about the um, the access. Commissioner Feltner, is, is that acceptable, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay, so I would make a motion to approve with the BDP. If, if you're good with the BDP, yep. yes? Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm great with what you decide. Yes, okay. ma'am. Right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll pass the gavel and do a second. Commissioner Goodson, do you want to call the vote? Yes, I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. Nay. Thank so, you so much. You guys all have a great holiday weekend. Again, thank you, Mr. Tobiah. Appreciate you very much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. We're going to move into item H8. You even get glory when you vote against it, John. That was the creepiest I'll see you. I don't. I don't know. You just impress everybody. Well, did that pass with two to two? No, it didn't pass. Thank you. I didn't think so. Madam. Madam. Did I do not wrong number? Item H8? Yes. 
We're on eight, 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 right? Yeah, you guys are looking at me like I did something like I did the other night. No. I, I think okay. just for clarification, I believe the applicant believed her item passed, but it failed by a 2-2 two -two deadlock. I don't think she so. thought that. Yeah. I had a feeling. You think she did? Yes. She oh. congratulated Commissioner Tomas. Miss Adrian, do you oh, want to find her? Tickle me. Okay. Okay. Is she here? Ma'am, you know your item did not pass, correct? Okay, okay. thank you. But she can come back. Sometime Try something more creative. Yeah, you come back with a, a different proposal perhaps later. Okay, item H8. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H8 is Morris M. Taylor Revocable Living Trust requests a change of zoning classification from SEU EA and BU1A to AU and BU1A. Application number is 23Z0001. Tax account number is 3008434. Located in District 3. Commissioner Tobias, this is your district. I do have six cards and two of them are the applicant, sir. Would you let me do the applicant and the cards first? Sure. Okay, thank you, sir. I have Morris Taylor. Mr. Morris Taylor. And Ms. Chelsea Anderson, you must be representing him? Yes, I'm the agent okay. for the applicant, and he's here for um, questions. Okay. Uh, so I'll go ahead and, and start off. Um, good evening, Chelsea Anderson, 1530 U.S. Ro Highway 1, Rockledge, Florida, 32955. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Max Taylor. Um, we're here tonight because Mr. Taylor's property is home to the last privately owned clam hatchery in Brevard County. And he's been approached by um, various organizations to provide clam seed for restoration efforts for the Indian River Lagoon. Um, right now, the use, is, the property has been used for uh, going on 30 years now for agricultural uses by Mr. Taylor and his family. Um, and this is uh, their established non-conforming uses at, at the present. Um, so they can't be enlarged or expanded, um, which is why we're requesting this rezoning today. Um, right now, the, they're at capacity with the buildings that they have. They're old and outdated, um, and they really need to modernize them in order to uh, be able to produce more clam seed and um, in, in, uh, in order to supply a significant amount towards the rest restoration efforts. Um, Right now, pretty much all of the clam seed that they produce on site is already spoken for um, by the clam aquaculture industry, um, different farmers throughout the state. There's some letters of support in your packet from them on how they, they're relying on, on that product. So um, to produce more, they do need a rezoning. Um, I will briefly touch on a few of the things that were in the agenda report um, about the compatibility with existing uses under Administrative Policy 3. Um, this proposed uh, rezoning, we're asking for the AU Zoning District, uh, which is agricultural residential. It is consistent with the Res 1 um, future land use, uh, uh, future land use, um, which is currently on the property. Um, and then, of course, the, the applicant would comply with um, the performance standards uh, that are in the land development code uh, that are designed to uh, eliminate potential nuisances um, and they're also this this use is regulated by the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services so they have to comply with best management practices um, as part of that licensure and um, they part of in part the reason for those best management practices is to eliminate um, and minimize external impacts um, of these uses. Um, so with that, uh, there are a few comprehensive plan policies that are in direct support of this application, um, or that this application rather would be in direct support of. Um, Coastal management element policy 5.15 says that during rezonings, um, the county should give immediate shoreline use priority to water dependent uses, um, such as uses for shellfish production, and that's the top priority for shoreline uses under that comp plan policy. Um, there's various uh, objectives in the coastal management element about improving 
the water quality in the lagoon. Um, and then recently the Save Our Indian River Lagoon uh, project plan update that was just updated earlier this year. It has a whole section on clam restoration, um, how it is warranted as a mitigation tool uh, for removing excess nutrients in the lagoon. And um, they actually allocate some funding uh, to stimulate clam aquaculture in the county. Um, again, this is the only clam hatchery privately owned in the county, so um, that would be in direct furtherance of, this project would be in direct furtherance of, of uh, that project plan. Um, that's really all we have for our presentation. I'd like to reserve my time for any rebuttal um, if needed. And if you have questions, I'm here, the applicant is here, and we have Mr. Ewan Layton, who is the aquaculture technician for the, for the hatchery. So. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please, sir. Um, for the rest of the speakers, I, I got some letters of support that were kind of interesting. One from, uh, and this is the South Beach, so this is not an area that generally people are all that amenable to changes. Uh, so the next door neighbor, I got a support letter. I got s multiple support letters, and this stuff has all been disclosed from the University of Florida on this one, both the uh, Whitney Laboratory and the Shellfish Aquaculture Program. So I didn't hear any negative on this one. So for the rest of the speakers, uh, you know, given the presentation, I'm strongly in favor of this unless I hear something demonstrably different at this point. Just a heads up. Thank you, Commissioner Tobiah. And as you know, we've always done here in the past, you live in the district, you, you, you're hands on on the property, you live around the people. So always your opinion weighs very heavily when I go to vote as well. I have Mr. Jeff Hill. Mr. Jeff Hill, are you here? Yes. Would you like to come speak, sir? Uh, just in your turn. In are you in support? Uh, okay, you do you want to just yeah. say you're in support uh, then? Okay. <laughs> Blair Wiggins? In support. Okay. Ewan? Thank you. John Robson? Come on up, sir. He works for Mr. I think this is a, a great situation where we're seeing a private owner of a property work to support what the government is trying to do. Uh, with regard to uh, cleaning up the lagoon. And we've seen so many things lately where people during the pandemic have cleared all their lots of everything that should be still there. Um, so when we have somebody who's been here over 50 years wanting to preserve the nature, literally the nature of the South Beaches, then I think not only should we give him this uh, uh, change, but also applaud him for doing that. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Commissioner Tobias, the floor is yours, sir. Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, Move to approve the change of zoning classification from SEUU and BU1A to AU and BU1A, Madam Chair. Second. Um, motion, Commissioner Tobias, second by Commissioner Feltner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 4-0. Item H9. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H9 is Thomas A. Metzger and Allen and Grace Metzger request a change of zoning classification from RR-1 to AU. Application number is 22Z00069. Tax account number is 2801827. Okay, in District 5. Thank you. Commissioners, I have a card from the applicant, another one from Allen Metzner. So, um, Mr. Metzner, are you with the applicant? I am co-owner. Co-owner, okay. Um, commission, I was comfortable with this. Did you guys have any questions for them? What's your, what's your thoughts? I talked with Ms. Danielle yeah. and the staff, so. Yeah, uh, 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 District 5 did a good job, the staff in there briefing yeah. us on this. I'm, I'm in support of this. Motion. There's a motion. Okay, so a motion uh, to approve zoning classification from RR1 to AU, Madam Chair. Okay, a motion second. and a second by Commissioner Feltner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4-0. Thank you, sir. Item H10 and H11 are companion. So, uh, Mr. Jeffrey, if you would read those into the record, and then we will do what 
you ask us to do, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item H10 is QW Trust Agreement requests a small scale comprehensive plan amendment 23S.01 to change the future land use designation from Res 15 NC and CC to all CC. Application number is 23SS. 0001 tax account numbers are 2407572 and 2407578 located in district 2 item H11 is QW trust agreement requests a change the zoning classification from GU and IU-1 to BU-1 application number is 23Z00003 tax account numbers 2407572 and 2407578 located in district 2 Mr. Goodson, I have one card from the applicant. Do you want to ask him questions or do you have comfort, sir? I have comfort on it. I have no issues with it. Okay, but if he'd like to speak, he's welcome to speak. Do you want to speak or since you got the votes, are you? Okay. Do you want to make a motion first for item H10 for me, yes, sir? Yes, I'd like to see approval of a motion for item H10, okay. Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. I have a motion for H10. Second. Second by Commissioner DeBaya. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 4-0. Would you like to do that same for item H-11, the companion motion? Yes, Madam Chair, I would. Okay, I have a motion for item H-11. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Feltner. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, passes 4-0. Moving into item H-12 and 13, and these are also companion motions. I see. Items. That looks familiar. Amendment 22S.19 to change the future land use designation from Res 15 and NC to Res 30 directive. Application number is 22SS00016. Tax account numbers 2412341. Located in District 2, item H13, Crane View LLC requests a change of zoning classification from RU2 15 with an existing BDP to RU2 30, removing the existing BDP and adding a new BDP. Application number is 22Z00071. Tax account number 2411-2341. Located in District 2. Commissioner Goodson, I have three cards on this one. I have the applicant and two others. I would like to hear them. Please, I, madam. I thought you might say that. Mr. Steve Anderson, the applicant. Had a good run going there. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Good evening, Commissioner. Uh, and people, I'm Steve Anderson, and I represent Mr. Metzer. Let's see here. Um, Yes. Uh, um, anyways, um, I think we all know that this site has probably, or if you have the packet on it, you know that it's been in this uh, state for almost 17, 18 years, and it's been a blight on the community. Uh, I've lived in Brevard County for 30 years and recently moved to Orlando, and I was very excited about the opportunity to work on this project with Summit to make it actually happen after so many people had actually tried. But the numbers and the uh, current uh, code violations and just it's just kind of one of those projects that is just not getting any traction. So um, and again, with the rise in rates and everything, it, 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 it takes it takes more units to make a project happen than the original binding agreement of 48 up to the 90. If we went to the RU 230, we could go one. 20 so that's why we've asked just to back it down and as as every hour clicks things are you know not getting much better out there so this is what it really takes to make it work um, you know our neighbors to the north they have the RU uh, 230 the ones to the east and south now we do have the future land use that maybe with the neighborhood uh, commercial that maybe we could divide this project in half as a of the compromise, maybe do two acres in the back, give us 60 units, and then do 1.94 acres out front and give us, and, but just something I think is good for Merritt Island, uh, too. You gotta understand that this would be the newest, best uh, place that is near the Space Center and other places, and now that the former people that were bringing it in, and I represent the owner, we're willing to completely look at making that building affordable housing. And we actually have two sponsors on board 
depending on if we get the amount of units we need or if we, have to, if we can split it, we can move forward with that project. And I think at this point I'll just reserve time for hear what other people have to say. Thank you, sir. Okay. Then we'll get into the project. You might want to stay close. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian Jackson. Andrew or Adrian? Andrew. Okay. In all fairness, it looks like an I. So. Oh, yeah, I wrote it really fast. Sorry about that. Anyways, my name is Andrew Jackson. I live at 2000 Hamlin Avenue in Carlton Groves. And um, this parcel is only uh, 3.95 acres for which the um, petitioner is seeking to construct 90 dwelling units. Uh, when you subtract the square footage needed for acres, for access roads, the retention pond, parking lots, dumpsters, utilities, pads, and maintenance facility, there remains only a one point acre footprint at most um, upon which to place 90 dwelling units. The density will be a minimum of 50 units per acre, which will necessitate a high rise building tower towering above the uh, neighboring single family homes and existing uh, two story apartments to the west and north of the subject parcel. Um, this type of extreme residential density is wholly uh, incompatible with existing improvements um, surrounding the parcel. This zoning of, uh, zoning of this magnitude is wholly out of place with the uh, character of this location in the heart of Merritt Island. Um, yeah, I believe that if he were to do the separation thing that he talked about earlier, that it wouldn't be a high rise and it wouldn't look down on the whole Carlton Groves area. My parents, uh, my wife's parents, my brother, my cousin, we all live in that neighborhood and that's our concern is that it's going to be just a giant tower looking down on the whole neighborhood if he goes to the 30 instead of the uh, 15. Um, I like the idea of that structure finally getting torn down and completed. Right now it's just an eyesore as it is. But we don't want a high rise right next to all of our neighborhoods. Or right next to all of our homes. Oh, I forgot to push your button. Are you done? you got about two minutes left, I think. Oh, that's my first time, sorry. Oh, you're, no, it's not your um, fault, it's mine. It's not my first time either, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I... I had to go to the opposite side of the neighborhood to find this little petition that someone put out. Um, I, I feel like we should have received something in the mail. The only way I found out about this was because of the opposite side of the neighborhood where there's um, obviously aren't going to be nearly as affected by this building. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Appreciate it. Ms. Diana Trimble. Turnbull, I'm 265 Spruce Avenue, Merritt Island, Florida, 32953. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I was concerned when I saw this. None of my neighbors have talked about this or anything else. It, I know that it's had two rooms that didn't work out with uh, the different developments they've tried. It sounds like they're still planning, so, but there is a uh, concern about how high the building will be and will I be able to go out my front yard and see my shuttle run off, you know, and stuff like that. So it's basically about concern about the neighborhood and um, running off water from, because we get all the running off of water from North Courtney down to our drains. So different things need to be factored. Um, and I'm learning and I'm listening. So, and the information that I asked for, I did not receive in my email from Jane. So um, you might know who that is. I don't know who it is. But um, I'm concerned about just little things. But, I would like to see the eyesore gone too. And I agree with uh, Mr. Jackson about half of the property going to other. But have they ever figured, um, thought about just single family homes? It's very valuable right now. So just an opinion, I do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Sandra Sullivan.
Sandra Sullivan. I've been coming to these meetings over four years. Do you know what has packed this room more than any other topic? More than any other topic. Has been Merritt Island, flooding in Merritt Island, the development of wetlands, et cetera, et cetera, development property runoff, and flooding by the, the residents there. It's packed this room numerous times. And so we have to be very careful how we develop in certain areas that are more uh, susceptible to flooding. So with that, I'm gonna go back to SB 102 and the impact on this and read you um, a paragraph or two and, um, and, and discuss the imp implications. So it's a line number 446, a municipality must authorize multifamily and mixed use residential is allowable in any area zone for commercial, industrial, or mixed use if at least 40% of the residential units are proposed for multifamily rental rates for a period of 30 years, yada, 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 and then it goes on. And then it says, um, a municipality may not require proposed multifamily development to obtain zoning or land use change, special exemption, conditional use approval, variance or comprehensive amendment for the building height, zoning, and densities authorized under this subsection. For mixed use residential projects, at least 65% of the total square footage must be residential purposes. B, a municipality may not restrict the density of a proposed development authorized under this subsection below for the highest allowed density of any land in the municipality where residential development is allowed. C, a, re a municipality may not restrict the height of a proposed development authorized under the subsection below, the highest currently allowed height for commercial or residential development located in the jurisdiction within one mile of the proposed development or three stories, whichever is higher. So what we're talking about here is Merritt Island is on the barrier island. Barrier islands are not like the mainland. Barrier islands are under a surge, according to the NOAA surge map, which was updated in 2021, between six and nine plus feet of water. We also have evacuation issues. We have I-95 at capacity in areas. We haven't updated our transportation impact fees in nearly, well, actually over 20 years. Um, it was supposed to be updated by 75% in 2016, but the commission said no. So we have all these expenses from growth, and guess what this bill, this live local bill does? This gentleman, if this is approved, which you must do so as this is written, he won't even have to pay property taxes. And he may not even know, he can be exempted on impact fees. So who's gonna pay for the, crop, the cost of growth? And you know the funny thing is, with the ordinance written by the county for affordable housing, the, the, even if they put in 10% affordable housing or zero affordable housing and just pay into a fee, those fees may not even offset the impact fees. So can you tell me who's going to pay for the cost of growth, this rapid growth? We're the fifth highest growth rate in the entire nation. We're the second highest job growth rate. Who's going to pay for the growth? The middle class. The middle class is going to bear this burden. Okay, yesterday, on Tuesday, you guys approved a 4.41% increase CPI in our sewage rates. But impact fees haven't been updated in 23 years. That's offensive. Ms. It's offensive. Back on this topic. For me, on this topic. On this topic. This is affordable housing. And the affordable housing is exemptions on property taxes, exemptions on impact fees. Who's going to pay for infrastructure? Thank you. Thank you. I don't know that I heard it was that. I guess it could be. Ma'am, don't talk from out there. Um, Commissioner Goodson, of course, this is your district. I know you know more than I do on it. I want to throw out a couple of um, things, though, if you in a second, okay? okay. I'm not okay. sure of that, Chair, but uh, okay. let me, let me, I am sure. Let me tell there. you this just a okay. second so you can think about this. I know Myra supported it, which is interesting to me because they don't typically support anything like this. Okay. But um, I did have concerns, and I'm, your, your feet on the ground there about the height of it and the density in that area. 
but again, sir, this is your district, yeah. and I'll respect it because you're the one who's got to okay. take all the tits on it. So. Yeah. Uh, question, please. Yes, Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. You mentioned affordable housing. Yes. Okay. I don't know if you threw that out for a hook, but tell me, or would you, and staff, you'd have to tell me, if you're going to do affordable housing, how many units? Well, what we're working on right now, and let's put it like this, that I think everyone's confused. We're at 35 foot maximum height. We, even in the RU2, it's all 35. It's not a tower. It's only what's already approved. We're not asking for any height change at all. Okay, it's the same height, Great. And, we Great. Could, and we could build the building tomorrow with the 48 units and it Great. would be the same and the views would change the same that they would if we do 90 units. But okay. how many units are going to be affordable? Well, housing? that's where uh, when the other partners pulled out and now I represent the owner only, we have two ways to go. Uh, Blue Sky Communities and another diocese are looking at it if 90 <coughs> units that we would need to be able to put onto that unit and they would go all affordable housing. All both of them would do both of them 90. The other developer would be willing to put back 60 units if we did the RU30 on the back two acres and leave the front 1.94 for the future, which is uh, future residential, uh, I mean, uh, neighborhood uh, commercial. Can you tell this board what is affordable housing? What value, affordable what, housing what is, is the Myra amount that you would charge that, that for affordable they, housing? Myra, uh, Larry has a chart, and at the high end of it, that we can stay within the rents that they were willing to consider to be affordable housing. And they have it per each square foot, one bedroom, and I do not have that with us originally because this is just something we'll put into a binding developmental agreement. How many units? 90. How many, how many will be affordable for that? He said all will be affordable. Did yeah, you not say that? it would be that? all. It would be a whole, the whole project, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we would. Can staff, if this was approved, can we write that in there that when he, if he gets approval, gets financing, all 90 will be affordable housing? Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, that this is the, what what we've looked at is that no other project makes sense, and the people that I work for have a mission, and they do this across the state, and they often tie in with the local diocese, and there's a need. There's two things that I would like, Madam Chair. I would like to see him commit to affordable housing. Okay. I would like to, for him to commit to a sidewalk that will leave his property and go south to the crosswalk for children and people to cross 90, uh, cross State Road 3. Those are the two things I'd like to see. And I need two more things than two. Huh. I need all of the code violations making no. go away so that uh, we can have a reasonable start on a project at that particular point. We'll be more than happy to There's do that. There's $150,000 owed by code violations, correct? And they correct? It's close to that. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's like 149,000. We have how many, Myra. How many years do they go back? I think they go back to 2000. Um, hold on a second. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think I'd be comfortable with that tonight uh -huh. either. No. Well, this is a two part deal, so I didn't get the other I part. I don't think out. you have support on You're the, the one that offered the one part deal on all being affordable housing. Well, yeah, we but didn't. then you asked another person. For a sidewalk, that's minimal. Yeah. That's protecting the people that you know, we represent. This is and just, trying to get just, the kids to just, that's just talking here because we need to get the building down. But $150,000, right when did you buy the property? Well, the project is still owned by Mr. When did Mecca. you buy the property? I represent the owner. Okay, when did he buy it? He got an inheritance when his daddy died. So he inherited the fines too? The mess. Yeah, yeah the, the mess. mess. That's why I'm asking for grace. Family mess. Uh, Madam Chair, I can't. I can agree on the two things I brought up. I can't agree on that. I agree with you if, completely, if sir. If you're going to either agree that you, the owner still has the fines, right, or either you're going to end up with probably a no vote and it'll go back to zoning again. So you can take it back up to them and talk to them. Okay. Well, because uh, right now you have an eight to two at the zoning, right, and you have four up here, right. Madam Chair, that's all I got to say. Thank you, Commissioner Tobias. Sorry, I was unaware of, of the, can you help me? How, how long are you, oh, a sidewalk are you proposing? Oh, it's only uh, three, <coughs> less than 150 feet, oh maybe God. 200. It's just uh, 
property's just north of uh, Carlton Groves, and you're just in the the uh, crossover is not even at Carlton Groves. It's just before Carlton Groves. If everything moves, can I get the fines reduced by the price of the sidewalk? No. Um, good, because uh, Commissioner Goodson, that's really good because it was brought up at the PNZ about the school being across the street, mm -hmm. and this is going to be young families, and we're going to have kids crossing that yeah. road in traffic. I think that's a really important thing to keep any children in the newspaper right. down the road from something terrible. So good, good catch. Why is that new, sir? I just okay. was curious why. Yeah. It's still your. I have no motion to make until he agrees he's got the fines and he agrees to the two things. I just find it hard to believe that the developers telling us numerous times they can't make it on low income homes. They can only do the bottom floor, low income and the top four floor they sell for high rates. But he's going to be able to make it selling all of them. This or, isn't no, renting them. These are rentals. Rental this is a group rental that makes right, money rental. on losing money. But yet doesn't come to the you know, you would think if he's going to promote and I'm not trying to upset you. I'm just trying to reason with you. If you're coming to this board saying all of them are going to be affordable homes, you would have bought the rates. Because what you might consider affordable would not be affordable to other people. So that's right now I don't have a motion. So it's up to you if you all like to deal. No, I, I agree in. with you. If it was in my district, I wouldn't approve the new zoning. I would have kept jump it in, with jump. the R. You 230. So um, Mr. Goodson's being pretty generous right now with his stipulation. So I, I'm with him on this. He's in the area. And you kind of addressed all the things that, that gave me more concern, too. So, sir, if, if you can get him to agree with you, I'm, I'm with you. Otherwise, I'm with you the other way, too. Commissioner Tobias, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just for the applicants, um, you know, the side, uh, sidewalk, I don't think you should have to agree to. Pay this, you should pay the fines regardless. That shouldn't be a stipulation to pay the mm -hmm. fines. Uh, what definition of affordable housing are you, because there's 12 or 13, I, I'm, I just, well, so we can, rent so, well, rent sorry, rent. This, is for, right. this is for the commissioner. Is there a certain definition of affordable housing so he knows, should he apply again, he can, he can meet that? I, I, yes, sir. Madam Chair. Yes, and that's a really good question because I deal in that category myself and there's a huge range on that. If you've, you know, we've said here, I've been on the board a short time compared oh, to you. Ju just to be clear, I'm going to support you no matter what you say. Okay. I just want you to well, be clear to the ac applicant, meet this definition of affordable home, come back and do a sidewalk and do it, and then, mm -hmm. then. I so personally he, think he needs to come back to us with what his rates are going to be. Because I don't know, we hear numbers from here to there. And I don't know what's affordable. We can't even get a, one guy came to before the board and said for, he could build affordable housing for $400,000. Remember him? The little uh, tiny homes? $400,000 is not affordable. Yeah, Are, would we do this on what the state considers as affordable housing income as far as rent? Because I know like um, first housing has an actual um, amount you're allowed to charge for rent mm -hmm. compared to people's yeah. incomes. Mm -hmm. So those are the questions I think you'd Larry, have to ask. With Myra has the rates, and I'm sorry that, like I said, at one point the, the former people didn't want to consider it all, but the new people, they know how to make no. this work. I, I, if you want to table this for two weeks and I come back, I'll, I'll have all those numbers and, and, and I'll have that information and I can get it over to Tom's office prior to that. Good talk, so. Mr. Tobias. And, and, and Mr. That's, that's fine with me, Madam Chair. Okay, we'll, so you we'll want to come make a back and table? Yes, I'll make a motion that we table okay it for two that? weeks. Yeah, do we have to re-advertise? Uh, if, if we do it in two weeks, do we want to wait for four? Because yeah. we do yes. want to have four commissioners here. You might want to wait until the first meeting <laughs> in, <laughs> in May. Because you never know where Commissioner Feltner is right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, that'll be fine. That'll be fine. We'll go to the next zoning meeting. How's that? <laughs> Maybe we make a better presentation. We only had three days notice on this after the, after the people backed out. Are we good with the next one to table to next Sony meeting? Next Sony meeting, Ted? So that would be May 4th. Okay. And I will caution you. I don't know what time you get it, Orlando, but you better be at uh, Larry's office because I'll be there for you. So let's hope and pray everything you've said is fine. Yes, sir. Okay. Because I'm hearing totally something different. Well, it just changed. Yes, it did. Well, okay. 
I got you. Yeah, right. it did. Okay, the old chair. people, there you wasn't. The now, like I said, in order to move it forward and make it, I've, I've reached out to some people that this okay. is all they do. Okay. And we'll get you. I'll bring up, we'll bring more people with Madam, this. So, uh, motion to table H12 and H13 till the May 4th uh, zone meeting. I'll second. Motion and a second to table to May 4th. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Passes 4 0. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We are moving into board reports. What reports? Board reports. Oh. Oh. County manager. I have no report. County attorney. Do you have a report, sir? No report, no report Madam Chair. Commissioner Goodson, do you have a report, None, sir? None, Madam Chair. Commissioner Tobia. No report, Madam Chair. Commissioner Feltner. No report, Madam Chair. Oh, and so good. I oh, well, do. Well, did we do consent? Consent? Did we, uh, we did do consent, didn't we? Consent? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. I okay, good. All right. On that, I didn't mess up too bad tonight. I'll call this meeting adjourned. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. I don't care. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.